And finance sentiment is definitely tricky. It's a real challenge. Why is it so hard? Well, think about it. You've got super short bits of text headlines, tweets sometimes, very little context. Plus, you have numbers mixed in with the words and the news. It gets old, like, instantly. Its relevance just evaporates. Okay. And how did people traditionally try to teach AI about this? Usually, it involved people, humans, reading and labeling tons of news snippets. Positive, negative, neutral. But that sounds subjective. Exactly. That's the problem. Human labels can have biases, right? What one analyst thinks is positive, another might just see as, well, neutral information. It doesn't always line up with how the market actually reacts. Okay, so human labels aren't the perfect ground truth for market sentiment. What did this research do differently then? Ah, uh, this is where it gets clever. They created a whole new data set, but based it on objective market events not human opinion. Market events. Okay, how? They took Bloomberg market wraps, these daily summaries of financial news going back quite away, 2010 to 2024. Wow, that's a lot of data. Yeah, and they used GPT-4 actually in a sort of two-step process. First, to pull out the most important headlines from these daily wraps, and second, to automatically figure out which company stock tickers were mentioned in those headlines. Got it. So step one, find the news. Step two, find the companies. What's step three? Labeling the sentiment. Precisely. But instead of asking a person, they looked at the stock market reaction for those identified tickers. Ah, so they looked at what the stock price did the next day. Exactly. They compared the next day's price change to how that stock usually behaved over the last five years. They used this quantile method. Quantile, like percentile. Sort of. Imagine ranking all the daily price changes for a stock over five years. If the price changed the day after the news fell below the bottom 30% mark of its usual changes, they labeled the news sentiment as negative. Okay, that makes sense. Below average drop. Right. And if it jumped above the 60% mark, so a bigger than usual jump, they called it positive. And in between. Neutral. The idea was to capture the sort of overall market reaction across multiple companies tied to that one headline, not just one person's guess. So they calculated the like median sentiment across all the stocks linked to a headline to get a broader picture. That's it. They wanted the macro effect. And crucially, they checked if this data set actually made sense. They built a really simple trading strategy using these labels. Buy on positive, maybe sell on negative. And guess what? It worked better than random. It did. It outperformed a random benchmark. Now, there's a bit of look-ahead bias acknowledged there, but it strongly suggests the labels captured something real about market tendencies.